Last time on Let's Play Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones. Why? Hello everyone, it's Three-Faced Janus, and this is Fire Emblem The Sacred Stones. And somehow, King Fado, the peerless warrior king, got killed. Just like that. Yeah, no kidding. It cannot be. I refuse to believe you, Nicolas Cage. Even though you can apparently see like five seconds into the future. Oh, well, at least we're going to get help from Frelia. I just... Come on. Fado was the man. Seth was not the man. I knew... I knew the identity of the man, and it was not Seth. It was Fado. So, I guess this means that Ephraim is the man now. He's inherited the title. Oh, and I guess he's also king of Renais, but, eh. So, apparently the inevitable fall of Renais was inevitable. Huh. Who would have thought? Alright, well, at least we're going to go and help the man, even though he doesn't need it. How many times have I said the man in this? Ah, oh, whatever. Yeah, because that's what all real main characters do. They rest and they mourn. Exactly. And still yet you defy me, old man. His son... How do you pronounce that? Ines? Eins? In Ines? I don't know. I'm probably going to butcher that repeatedly, just like I did Tana Tana earlier on. Oh, you could say no, but then again, we wouldn't have an adventure then. And we have Vanessa, another player character. Mulder, another player character. Go away. <sighs> Thank you, computer. Mulder, another player character. And Gilliam. Yes, sir! And we get more party members. All right. Three at once. And they're not exactly the most characterized of the Fire Emblem cast, but oh well. And we get weapons and provisions like we should. And unlike Fire Emblem 6, we don't have to protect our caravan all the time. Although I like that in that game. And we get 5,000 gold. It's 5,000! Uh, Oh, come on. You want to come with us? Come on, Tana. You know you want to be a player character. But Vigard looks creepy. He's an obvious antagonist. You guys should have known that before you signed the treaty. Okay, well, maybe he's not that bad, but I mean, come on. Those eyes of his... <laughs> see that I mean you will not lose your brother I swear that if anyone's not gonna die it's gonna be Ephraim but that's what I said about Fado wasn't it chapter 2 the protected alright so unlike any other fire emblem we have a world map or well every Fire Emblem has a world map but we have a world map that we navigate ourselves on does anyone else find this fascinating well I do but before we get into exactly how this works I believe it's time for a sponsor spot B button incorporated for all of your cutscene skipping needs and now we're back alright uh, so basically there's not much 
that we can do on the map really here uh, since well there's only three places we can go but later on it'll there will be more to the map but for now we just go to Ide I assume it's the Japanese pronunciation and even though we are the princess of their greatest ally they cannot spare any soldiers <laughs> except for three people yeah, out of your entire army, you give your greatest ally three people. That's great. And like all foolhardy heroes, we go right into the heart of the enemy territory. Chapter 2, The Protected. I assume they're protecting the... Fallen ruins over nice, but all right. So we're going through Seraphiu into Grotto. All right. Oh, I'm sure we won't run into any Grotto soldiers on the way. All right. So I'll be getting into what these guys do, and as you might guess, Vanessa is able to fly, and I'll explain why as soon as it lets me get to the level here. Yes, as you can see, she is a Pegasus Knight. She rides a Pegasus. Isn't that great? And these are some... The Game Boy Advance Fire Emblems have a penchant for making the ugliest bandits ever. I mean, but if you think these guys are bad, oh man, some of the ones from Fire Emblem 6, oh boy. And this guy's name is Bone. Excellent. Hey, look at these guys. And they're about to show us one of the more annoying things that the bandit class can do. If they'll get around to it. Yeah. Yeah, they destroy entire villages by themselves. So they must be insanely powerful, right? Oh man, I am dreading that. Alright, so apparently this guy is a warrior, and his son, Ross. Being the heroes that we are, of course we're going to help them. <laughs> it's not exactly under attack. It's more like it was under death. And of course we have to help them. Yada yada yada. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna make the obvious joke here. Alright, come on, I know what you're telling me to do, okay? Alright, uh, finally. And with like two minutes left, I finally get to do something in this video. Well, um, as you can see, Garcia and his son Ross here. Uh, Ross actually having been dealt damage. I like how they do that from the cutscene. Uh, but as you can see, they're green units, meaning that we have no control over them, and they're not the enemy, they're just, you know, other units. So... Um, our first move is kind of obvious and it's fed to us, really. Uh, we have to take Vanessa, who, since she can fly, has a ridiculous movement range. She's not hindered by any terrain, even mountains, which most classes cannot even move on to. And so, yeah, she's got basically perfect movement. Uh, Pegasus Knights, in general, are a very interesting class, but I'm afraid that I'm going to have to explain all of this and the various other new classes that we got, or well, other new class that we got in the next video. So, I'm afraid that I'm going to have to cut this here and see you all then.